Hey friends, in this video we're going to take a look at the fact that you can get really good at sound design or understanding how synthesizers work and turning knobs and knowing what each one of those parameters changes. But if you don't understand the interplay between incoming MIDI notes and synthesizers glide and legato settings, you're really missing out on a lot of incredible sound design as it pertains to pitch. All right, so let's check out what I'm talking about. So here's a bass line I made with Ableton Wavetable and just go ahead and listen to this bass line. Now to me, this bass line has a lot of style. There's a lot going on, and it's a little higher pitch than I normally would play it at, but that's because a lot of y'all are listening on your cell phones and not using headphones like you should be. <laughs> so I have this a little bit higher pitch, but what you can hear is that you can hear there's differing amounts of glide applied to different notes. All right, let's go ahead and double click on this and take a look at what's going on. So you can see I've got some clip automation going on here. Let's take a look at what is going on there. As you can see, we've got glide, and glide is changing in different areas. I could also have done this in arrangement view. I could look at glide under the wavetable automation here. But what I'm doing is I've got it in the clip. And as you can see, there's differing amounts of glide depending upon the note that's playing. Let's watch this as it plays. So maybe up until this point, you either had glide on or you had it off and what your bass line ended up sounding like is kind of one-dimensional. Now, there's a lot going on with this patch, so what I want to do is I want to build this from scratch, okay? So I'm just going to copy the MIDI. That automation that I applied to the wavetable is not going to get copied. So I'm just going to grab a new wavetable, drag it and drop it on here. Okay, so I'm going to make this a saw waveform so we can hear it. I'm going to turn the release down a little bit, and, and I've got it on mono mode. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a listen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of some of these extra notes that I have in here. Uh, these were made for this specific purpose. But for now, I'm just going to show you how I was thinking about this when I started making this bass line. So the original bass line, I'm just going to loop this first section. The original bass line went like this. And to me, that is just as boring as possible. I'm gonna filter this down a little bit. And let me go ahead and I'm gonna change this to a dirtier filter. There, that'll be a little bit more audible for you. Now, when you turn wavetable on mono mode, what this does is it makes it so that you can only play one note at a time. And as you turn up glide, it takes longer to get from one note to another, and there's a, there's a smooth uh, interpolation between the notes. Right? Okay. So this control, a lot of people will just leave this in a static setting, and that is what I'm talking about right now. The static setting of glide will always yield the same amount of time between notes, and that is just so unbelievably boring. But let's leave it at kind of a low area, maybe like 50 milliseconds. And notice that there's no glide when I pick up my finger. But if I hold one finger down and then play another note, there's glide. That's what's called legato. Okay, and legato can actually refer to a lot of different things. Normally, when you turn on legato mode in a synthesizer, it just means that the envelopes and LFOs will not re trigger when you have one note held down and then you play another note. Okay, now in Wavetable, there are other ways to address this, but basically they kept it simple on the front panel. Like most Ableton devices have a lot of depth to them, but you have to get into the menus in order to, to access that depth. So basically when you turn this on to mono mode, only when there's overlapping notes will there be a pitch slide. Okay, so that's the first thing to understand. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this first section of this clip. So at this moment, this is what this sounds like. We 
we can hear that there's some pitch sliding between this area and this area because these notes are overlapping. Now, if this note was not overlapping, there would be no pitch change, all right? These have to actually overlap. These notes have to actually be overlapping just slightly. You can do it just the slightest amount. Now listen. <laughs> it was so slow that it didn't even change. So if I go in here and make this faster, let's do 100 milliseconds. Now we'll have... Hear that? So we can take advantage of this. So something maybe that I want to do is I want to do a pitch bomb at the very beginning of this bass line. So I want to go from here to here. So I'll make this long, and now it sounds like... Dude, see how fast that was? Now, let's say I like the pitch difference between these two, but I want this one to be different, okay? This is the main concept that I wanted to show you. The main concept is, is that if I want a pew, if I want a long pitch dive here, but I want this to be fast, I have to actually automate glide time. Now, before I did it inside of the clip, let's go ahead and do it inside of, as you can see, glide is already selected in arrangement view. So I'll make this just a little bit bigger, okay? And right now it's showing me that glide is set at 112 milliseconds. But if I want this first little riff to be a pitch dive, I obviously have to make this higher. So let's do two seconds. Right? Now we get a nice... Now do you see how this one was quick and this one is slow? That's how that's accomplished. Now let's say I want a pitch dive right here on this note. Okay, so the way that I would do that is I'd make the note that I want to dive to. Super deep, you can't even hear the note, but it's still fun to do. So let's do a pitch dive down to here. Now, your, your immediate thought might be, okay, I need to pull this down. But see, that's going to make it faster. Okay, so it's kind of ass backwards. But basically, if I make this up high, when this note happens, this will just slowly go down. Maybe we'll make it over seven seconds. Let's see what that sounds Yeah, <laughs> kind of drunk baseline, right? Let's do one mill. Let's try one and a half seconds and see what that sounds. Now you can hear it right there at the end. It would probably make sense to make this end before this other note, so we can go directly to this note. Now you can hear that this right here is a little bit too slow. Now I want to show you something else. The new note trigger for the next glide is never going to happen until the next note happens, okay? If this is back here, it's going to take all the way until here to start that pitch change. So you got to make sure it starts where you want it, okay? So... So that's a little bit slow. So inversely, what I'll do is, here's my glide time. I'm actually going to turn this down. So I'll just bust out my pencil. You know, sometimes it's nice just to turn off the grid, hit B, and then just for that note area. And since these are all overlapping, these can be really fast. Now you can see how long these take a little bit. This is a little bit slow. But maybe I want these last couple notes to be, to be even slower. So... Right? So you can get all this style going. Let's go ahead and listen to this bass line in total now. So this is how you add a lot of interest to your bass lines. Like this, normally this bass line would be pretty boring if my glide was completely static the entire time. And as in, it always takes the same amount of time for one legato note to go to another, right? Hey, so if you're enjoying this content and you want to show me some support, I'd love a follow on Spotify or SoundCloud. You can see those links down in the description and in the comments. I'm also making Ableton online courses, one on songwriting and composition and the other one on mixing and mastering in Ableton. And I'm almost finished with the sound design and synthesis course, which will be out sometime this spring. So if you're interested about learning about any of those things, the links are down in the description and comments. And of course, liking and commenting also helps with the algorithm. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So let's go ahead and I'm going to add this other thing. And I'm going to actually, I know this is not normal for me to do, but I'm going to take a look at Serum. Um, the reason I'm busting out Serum is that Serum just happens to have a lot of the controls I want to talk about that uh, the, some of these Ableton plugs don't have directly. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen to this Serum track and listen to what it's doing. So yeah, let's go ahead and discuss what's happening with this serum line. I'm going to go ahead and play it by itself.
Now, again, I'm going over this because all synthesizers will have different ways to address glide. And Serum happens to have one of the most robust um, glide sections. Um, this, in this case, they call it portamento, but it's the same thing. Portamento glide. Essentially, if portamento or glide is up high, you get longer times between notes. Right? Now, you don't have to have mono mode on Serum in order for this to occur. You could have chords, which I also think is nice. But if you have mono mode on, this kind of makes more sense for what our purposes are. Now, I also have this always switch thrown. Now, a lot of synthesizers will have this. This is where, no matter whether you're playing legato or not, the pitch will always go from one note to another based on the port portamento time, right? If always is off, it will only activate the portamento when I'm holding one note down. So what's nice about having this as an option is you're going to get a really different lead or bass line if this is on or off. Because sometimes what you end up playing sounds like this. But when this is on, <laughs> right, <laughs> you can get very different sounds. So in this case, I had this lead line and it sounds like this. Now, if I change the portamento time, we get. And so maybe some of you are coming from acid music. Uh, you have to be pretty old at this point, like me, but uh, maybe you're coming from an, an acid standpoint. And in that case, you probably miss using those sequencers that had glide on them. Now, what's so great about this, if you pay attention to what's going on here, is that you do have glide time in Ableton. And in fact, you have a way to tie notes or slide notes together. Slide was the control that you're probably used to seeing. If I take a pencil tool and bring this all the way down, okay, and I turn this on, I turn the grid on to maybe narrow mode or something. So now I'm looking at sixteenths. What I have here is basically every single time I want, I can turn on uh, glide for either every note or every section of the grid. So in this case, maybe I'll turn it on here. I'll turn it on here. I'll turn it on here and here. And now if Serum is on, if the portamento time is all the way down and I have always on, this will activate what you could consider a glide control or a slide control. Now take, take a listen. But what's great about this is that this is a variable control, right? So maybe I want less here and I want more here. So, I mean, on those old sequencers, you pretty much had one time, right? And now in this case, you have multiple times. You can change the speed of the change by changing the portamento time. Basically what I'm trying to show you is that when you're working with these synthesizers, don't think in one dimension, okay? These are variable controls. They may seem like set and forget controls, but they're absolutely not. Let's look at one more example. So check this bass line out. Now, let's say, for example, that you wanted to kind of have like a nice pitch dive, but you still wanted that da 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 rhythm right? Well, maybe the thing that you would assume is, okay, what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll click on Portamento time and I'll turn it up. Now we get... But do you see what happens when I loop this? It doesn't get back up to the top pitch. So yet again, the move here is to turn down the Portamento time just at the beginning. And then, of course, these notes right here are really important to me. I want da 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 da. I want that to happen, so I'm going to turn this back down right here. Let's take a look at one more other thing I want to show you while I've got you still. 
So this is our baseline at the beginning, right? So I'm going to turn these off and we're going to take a look at this. So within all synthesizers, there is a thing called key tracking. And when you're moving pitches, like you're changing those pitches around, a lot of the time you can take key tracking and map it to different features. Um, in this case, let's go ahead and I'm going to boost the resonance on this filter a little bit. And at this point, the filter frequency is staying kind of static. If I click on the filter frequency and look at matrix though, what you can do is you can go over to the MIDI side of it and you can say, okay, I want the note to affect the filter frequency, okay? And because we have these pitch dives happening, it's gonna happen slowly. Check this out, this is rad. See that moving? So now let's bring this up to a usable range. And I think this is actually really fun to do when you have maybe a notch filter on the first filter and you get this kind of sound. And then on the second filter, maybe we'll do like a more distorted filter. Might need to turn this down a bit. And then this filter frequency is moving in a different way. So maybe filter frequency two for note and I'll make it go the other way, why not? Now, some synthesizers will have a lot more range. Uh, Wavetable doesn't really have that big of a, of a, of a note-changing range because the way that they've mapped the key tracking is all the way from the lowest note to the highest note. So if this was a lot crazier, like for example, if this was, we get a much bigger dive. So something that can be fun in this case is to hold shift and click octave up some of your notes. Maybe we'll put something in the middle here. <laughs> and so now we can see that the effect on the filters is gonna be that much more intense. So I encourage you as you're messing around with these synths to get in there and mess around with the portamento time or the glide time. It doesn't matter. There are, every single synthesizer has this option somewhere. It's buried somewhere. Operator, wavetable, simpler. They're all over the place, okay? And that's just Ableton devices. Anything you find on the internet, any VST, these are all things that you can edit. And one of the best things to do is to get into that timeline, get into that piano roll, and start moving this effect around. It's crazy what you'll end up coming up with. Awesome. If you like this kind of thing, please like, comment, and subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.